guys, today we're going to talk about changing out a water filter in your refrigerator. Now most refrigerators have a built-in water filter now if you have water and ice through the door. So what we're going to do is actually take the factory water filter out and we're actually going to put our own filter on there. I know a lot of you think that if you go out and buy a refrigerator, you're glued to having to replace it with that exact filter. Well, in reality, there's actually bypasses and there's other things made where you can actually not have to restock with these filters and buy 50, 60, 70 dollar filters every six months. You can actually put a filter on the back of your refrigerator and get the same type of filtration. Alright, so these are the two filters we're going to show you that you can actually replace the factory one with. They go in the back of your refrigerator. This one here is going to be a five year and this one here is a one year. Right, but what's going to be the difference is some factory filters may have better filtration. So you might want to look into the brand that you have in your house and see what type of filtration it has. A lot of filters are made the same. They'll just take out sediment and odor, which is what these two will do. But if yours actually takes out more, then you may want to stick to the factory. All right, one more thing before we get started. You're thinking, well, this filter goes inside my refrigerator, and the one you're going to do is going to go in the back. So how is that going to make any sense? Well, inside your refrigerator, there's uh, casing and also housing that actually stores the water and keep it cold. So this goes up in there so it kind of filters and comes through. But what happens when you take this out is it should automatically go through if it doesn't require a bypass. Now refrigerator brands like LG, also Whirlpool, and GE, a lot of times you'll have to buy a bypass as well, which is like 10 bucks, but you put it in there you kind of put the bypass in and then you can do the rest of the work on the back. I'm back here behind the fridge. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you what you need that's maybe not included in the kit that you have to go get at a hardware store or from your garage or where mom and dad or from whoever. So you're going to need two sets of pliers. These are grip pliers. Um, you don't need these necessarily. You can get just a uh, little tiny pliers that twist in and twist out. But you need something that's going to hold pipes because you're going to kind of be doing this a little bit. Also, get yourself a couple towels, one for your knees, one for water, because you're going to get a little bit of water. And the other thing is you're going to need a bucket. Now, the bucket's not for stopping water or anything else. What you're going to do is you're going to bleed these filters out. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. All right, so first thing we're going to do, obviously, we're going to turn the water off. You don't have to unplug the refrigerator. So don't worry about that. It won't electrocute you or anything like that. Now, if you want to, that's fine as well. But first thing is, let's turn this guy off. Now, your cutoff should be behind the fridge, but there's a lot of old houses that the cutoff is underneath the floor or somewhere else. If it is, you got to make sure you go cut the water off first. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to undo this thing, and there's going to be just going to spray with a pretty good pressure and uh, chances of you stopping it unless you have a quick cutoff to put on it are, is, is going to be um, not very quick. So make sure you find where your cutoff is, cut the water off first, and um, after that we're going to take this line off and you're going to get a little water so I put a towel right here and uh, we'll bleed it out just a bit. Now these things have what is called built-in flares, so I like to pull on them a little bit because otherwise you get a little bit of spray when you uh, do it. There you go. No water. We're good to go. These water lines here are in the kit and we highly recommend replacing copper, even stainless steel braided. The reason is, is these PEX lines have built-in flares, so you don't have to worry about seals busting or anything like that. And two, they're like slinkies, so they'll easily go back behind the refrigerator, they won't fall on the ground like a stainless steel braided line would, and they won't bend or crack or even uh, puncture open like a copper line would. So this is the most reasonable thing. Uh, to use and it's easy to use too when you install these plus you can use it over and over you uninstall reinstall uninstall reinstall you not ever have to replace any seals now the only thing you have to watch out with these 
is they do have built-in flares so you have to hand tighten these and once you get a hand tight it fitting what you're going to do then is take your pliers and just do like a quarter of a turn and that's it and then you're going to turn your water on and if you get a little bit of a leak just tighten it just until the leak stops because otherwise what will happen is you'll end up over tightening it and you'll actually get rid of this flare and if that happens well, the line's no good anymore all right first thing i'm going to do is we're going to put our filter right here on the back so i'm just going to use some stickies because what you can do with these guys is you can reuse these and you can put them anywhere on the back i would not recommend having any filter drop to the floor so make sure you are putting them on your back side here. Now we're going to put the filter long way like this. So we're going to have a strap go over here and then we'll have another strap go over here. So let me put another strap up and our filter will go like right in between it. Put one here and you can put it anywhere you want. That's the awesome thing with what we're doing is is uh, it's pretty open-ended so there's no wrong way or right way to do it other than making sure your water connections and your placement is correct. Alright, so what's awesome about these is you can slide your zip tie through here. Now your zip ties, you know, uh, they do have reusable zip ties if you want to use those. But otherwise, you know, you just would cut these off when you're done with it or when you want to put it in a new filter. As you can see. It's going to fit right there when we're done. So next thing we're going to do before we put our filter on the back is we're going to actually install this water line and then we're going to put the filter attached to this and then we're going to clear the filter. Your filter is going to hook on this end, then you're going to take your other water line, hook it on that end, and then that would go down to your water valve. Now I've already got lines hooked into that place or it could go into your... Mine has one right here where it doesn't go into the water valve first, it goes to the filter first. If you have one of these, just you can actually take this line apart and attach another line here. So you're going to have a line, filter, line, and then that's it. That, that'll cause it to bypass and go through your filter and everything. Alright, so PIX line, remember, we want to hand tighten and then just half quarter. That's it. So we're going to actually push this on. I'm just going to hand tighten it as hard as you can. Alright, that's good right there. Just a quarter of a turn. That's it. That's it. That's all you gotta do. I mean, that's not on there. That's on there good enough and tight enough. And when we turn the water back on, don't turn it on yet because it'll spray out of this end. But when you turn the water back on, you should not have any leaks. If you do, just slowly tighten it up. You don't want to tighten it up like you would old copper uh, piping because copper piping you could just go real as hard as you wanted to. But this, you don't want to do it like that. You want to be real easy going. Have a little bit of a finesse to it guys we got uh, so this is our one year filter we've got two fittings we're going to open this up put our fittings on and then we're going to hook our water line to here because you see where it says flow that's what we want it we want it to flow into the bucket so when we put this thing in the bucket we want to you know with the flow arrow pointing this way if you got it pointing this way it's not going to work right all right so uh, this is the one year filter we're going to actually pull this cap off and then we're going to actually install these right into Take this part off, install these, and what's awesome about this is you can reuse it over and over. Now, you can wrap it with Teflon tape if you want to. Um, I prefer not to just because uh, if you're installing it correctly, you're not going to really need Teflon tape on these guys. Plus, it's a filter, so I don't really want any chemicals or anything into it. And we're going to take these ends off that come with it. Don't worry about losing any of them because you're not going to need them. And now we're going to make sure our flow is pointed. And we're going to hook our line right in here. Now remember what I said? Hand tight. Quarter turn. Alright, we're ready. Now we're going to turn our water on. Turn it on slow. Make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere. You can see there's no leaks. Got no leaks down here. Now 
you don't bleed the filter, you're going to get a lot of air in your line. And when you try to get ice or water out of the front of the door, it's going to take forever to come out. So make sure you bleed it for about half this bucket. And then once you do that, we'll hook the other end on and you'll be ready. But this is the kind of flow you want out of there. That's really good water pressure. So once done, you can actually turn it off. And then from here, we'll actually uh, hook it up the rest of the way. All right, we're going to hook our other end here. Order. Now you should be able to turn this on, not get any water, but turn it on slow. Alright, you can see we got a little bit of a drip right here, so that's why you want to turn them on slow. So, let's see we're dripping from the actual unit here. We said earlier don't use teflon tape well that didn't work as uh, any plumber would tell you you probably want to use uh, teflon tape if you have any kind of copper fittings uh, going in the plastic so what we're going to do is we took our filter back apart because it was leaking so we're going to actually take our piece here we're going to wrap it up into teflon tape so um, the teflon tape is not uh, will actually include in the kit as well to help you guys out so basically you want to um, wrap this Teflon, try not to get it um, too bulky around there. You want it as flat as possible. That way you can put a couple of different um, braids around it, I guess, or wrap it a couple of ways. But it will, this will definitely give it the seal it needs to stop it from leaking. All right. So that's done. Now we're going to put this Teflon taped copper piece right into here and screw it down. see our end here nice and clean now no leaks we're in here nice and clean and look at that slinky you see it moves so once we hook it back up here it's gonna move real easy against the wall and it won't hit the floor and so you won't run over it you won't cause leaks and you won't cause kinks um, and that's none of the stuff you want to do all right so now we're gonna mount it we're gonna put your filter right here you can see this line comes from the wall there's your flow, so it's coming from the wall into the filter and going into the refrigerator. So make sure your flow is always right. Like I said, you want your wall line to go this way towards the flow or that way or wherever. You just want your flow to go the same way that your water is flowing. Now, you, there's so many ways you can mount this. Um, you can do one of these. You can do two. You can take like one of these off and then you can like, you know, wrap the filter around that way. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually take this out and I'm gonna go for the first one. And then I'm gonna go for the first one here. So that way it's a little bit closer to the filter and, and it will zip tie a little closer. If you're not comfortable with it being tight enough, 
then you can use one and wrap the other um, wrap the other piece right here around it. See how tight that is. I cannot move that at all. Now what you can do is grab you a piece of scissors and actually cut just these ends off as well. Or you know, if you don't want to do anything, they can dangle. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just a, you're not going to see it, and it's cosmetic, and it, it'll help hold it. Last thing you want to do is we're going to run water out of the front. You want to make sure this doesn't leak as you run water out of the front. All right. When you're done, make sure you check to make sure there's no leaks, and also. Watch this for about a week or so after you install it. Just look under the fridge, make sure you don't have any water coming out. Anytime you mess with water, you want to be extra careful as far as um, making sure you're looking after everything and connection wise. And so, just nothing's probably going to happen, but it's always safe to just keep looking at things. Now, if you want to uh, put the five year on, this is the five year. You would do the exact same thing with this five year one as you would do with the one year. 